When Steve Jobs was a kid, he remembered this one story when he was maybe six or seven years old. He went up to the girl across the street and he told her that he was adopted, to which she replied, so does that mean your real parents didn't want you? He said that lightning bolts went off in my head. I remember running into the house crying and my parents said, no, you have to understand. They were really serious and looked him straight in the eye. They said, we specifically picked you out. And they put an emphasis on every word in that sentence, that they chose him because he was special. You know, when a dream forms itself in your mind, in your heart, at first it's like this innocent little baby. It's beautiful, it's vital, it's alive. It has this excited feeling of potential about how it might change or how it might improve your life. And for a moment, you feel younger, stronger, alive for the first time in a long time. But then a lot like children, something happens when it meets quote reality. When it meets the voices of your friends, your family, society, when all of those things meet you. You know, one of my own friends said to me when I wrote my first book, good luck selling your self-published books. You need a whole marketing team and a publishing agent to really do anything with books, not to mention they're a dead business. Well, tens of thousands of books sold later and hundreds of thousands of dollars in royalties. Who's laughing now? So what if, and this is just a thought, but what if Steve Jobs really wasn't that special and really wasn't that unique, but just believing that he had been given a special gift gave him all the gifts he needed to become an exceptional human being? What if every limitation and barrier in your head is just the belief of one person in your life. And the day you realize that you were born with that exact same seed, the same potential to do something great, will be like the day Steve Jobs' parents hinted, you are special, now go and prove us right.